that's I, I ran into a similar realization for myself because um, I graduated um, the whole time I was working for Apple on the phones. And I feel like I can talk about it now. Uh, it's great. I always avoided talking about <laughs> Apple uh, on, on the podcast because I never wanted to get in trouble because they're such a big company. Um, but I, I avoid trade secrets and stuff. But so I was working for I was working for Apple and I was working on the phones and I worked that job during college. And it was great because it was like it was part time during the school year. And I had I only had to work one weekend day. So okay. I always had one weekend day that I could fuck off. Okay. Um, and then I would work three days during the week, and those would be four-hour shifts, and the weekend day was an eight-hour eight shift. Um, so I ended up graduating, and I still had that job. Yeah. And so I transitioned from the college program to, like, full-time there. They paid me significantly more money, which I thought was both cool and insulting at the same time because I'm like, I'm not doing anything different. Why do I suddenly <laughs> get so much more money? You guys have been ripping me off while I was in school. This is fucking bullshit. Uh, which was hilarious, but, um, but you know, either way I was, I was living at home, I was saving money, but I wasn't going anywhere. Like I was stuck at home, um, sitting in a room all day. And my only time to go outside was on my breaks or when I would go to the gym before the shift, yeah. that would be pretty much it. And that was my only interaction with anybody. None of my friends still lived in the area or because I actually went home a semester early versus all, all of the people in my grade. Yeah. Like everybody was still in college. Um, so I didn't really have a social life and I looked at this like, well, this isn't video production. This isn't even like, where does this go? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm working remotely. It's pretty hard to build relationships and get promotions and work up through a company that you really aren't with anybody. Yeah. Um, and I got a promotion and that helped and that made me more money. But I did that for about a year and I was like, I'm, I'm done. And at that point that was four years into working for them so you know that one year uh home alone you know and i was with my parents <laughs> but i say yeah. home alone meaning feeling like i had nobody else there i was like well i can't keep doing this but i saved up some money and uh my uncle offered me the opportunity to move here and so that's where i was like all right well let me figure out what i can do in a city somewhere else because yeah. i need to get out of my home because you don't grow when you're stuck in your hometown. Yeah. You got to leave. And I did leave for college, but like when you come back, you feel like it went backwards. Yeah. Um, and so when I came here, I started taking the class at Second City and it like opened up my world where I'm meeting other creatives and yeah. I was feeling their inspiration, their passion I was feeding off of their energy. And then I worked at the bar and the bar sucked. <laughs> it just like made it not fun at all. Um, and I told the story a couple of times on the podcast, but like eventually when I got back to Apple, and I worked at the store, it was different. It was better. It was with people. I worked with coworkers. It was a better energy. Yeah. But even that hit a wall where I was like, okay, well, now this is cutting into the creative time. It gave me the financial stability. It got me back on my feet. It yeah. allowed me to acquire a lot of the materials that I am now currently using to shoot this. This, this has been slowly built up. I didn't buy all this shit at once. you know. Yeah. Uh, but eventually I started scaling up and working up. And I eventually got to a point where I was like, all right, now the job's in the way. So now that I found this new job... This job gives me freedom in a way that I didn't have before. And there will be a point where this job will be in the way, right? When I level this thing up enough where this makes me money and it makes it, you know, uh, there's an incentive structure for me to be like, maybe I don't need to work that job anymore. Yeah. I don't know when that'll be. So, you know, probably going to still be a while. But, you know, each time, like when you're working on these things, you level up. But when you come out of college, you don't really, like, know that. No. You know, you don't have the context or the understanding of, like, oh, this is going to be a slow grind. And, you know, but at over time, it gets both easier and harder. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it gets easier because you learn what to do better. But it gets harder because the stakes raise and what you can potentially gain uh, also raises. Um so it's this weird, weird challenge where you kind of have to have faith in yourself and you have to have faith in the process and yeah. understanding that like there's me shit you don't know. But if you work through them, you will figure them out. And if you find people who know better than you, learn from them, yeah. you know, find those masters and try to learn from them. Heck yeah, dude. That's I think that's like what the difference between like what we see college versus like a boomer sees college because mm -hmm. like the boomer idea is like you leave. It's almost like that. There's like a there's a Disney bit with Goofy with it. Like you leave, you get the job, you work your way up, you get to the spot, and you're looking at it, and you see rosebud and you die, you know? <laughs> yeah. And that sucks. Yeah. Because one, all of those jobs don't exist in that format anymore. Yeah, not anymore. The the 
A and D community in like office furniture, for example, like doesn't really exist anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, direct to sales now is a thing that a lot of companies have figured out to do. No one's going through. You know, a lot of those dealers like I sell plastic to people. Mm-hmm. No one does that shit anymore because they just go direct to the fucking source. Yeah. But like now, people are leaving college or they're getting degrees and things that they feel passionate about, and no one's telling them how to find and build that passionate project. You know. Mm-hmm. And that's where I think it's fucking crazy. Like I, uh, in Detroit, for example, I don't know, maybe I'm too far from the mic. <laughs> maybe uh, a little bit, yeah. In Detroit, uh, Quicken Loans, right, mm-hmm. built up a big campus on town. And a lot of people I graduated with, whatever their degree was, Quicken Loans didn't give a fuck. It's kind of like Epic Systems in like Wisconsin. Just hire. Mm-hmm. We will give you, you come here, work for two years, we'll give you yada, yada, yada. All of a sudden, people I, I graduated with are like, they're like loan certified and shit. Mm-hmm. They attend some like weekend class and now they're like loan certified. Now they, they work for Quicken Loans and they're working up this corporate structure that's in opposition to their existence and what they trained to do, what they spent $100,000 to do. They're like basically paying off a gambling debt. Yeah. They're like, oh, <laughs> I lost playing euchre or well you don't gamble in you <laughs> i lost playing blackjack and i owe a hundred thousand dollars because i thought i was going to be an artist but you know what i'm a loan specialist at quicken loans i'm gonna pay this loan back ironically and then i'm yeah. gonna work my way up oh damn it they pass me again in the promotion well you know what i'll go somewhere else and i'll do a project manager gig and it's soul sucking and yep. it's it's not you shouldn't have to accept mediocre especially if you had to pay the price for it and there's, it's one of the reasons I fucking hate Dan Gilbert. Like, I fucking hate. <laughs> Quicken Loans, first of all, is the pro, you know, weird tangent. Their predatory loans are the reason why a lot of Detroit houses got fucked. And I'm not the person equipped to talk about this the most, but Detroit's problem isn't its people. Detroit's problem is the property that's owned by certain people. And they want to fuck people because they mm-hmm. want money. Yep. It's hard for me. I still haven't gone to Little Caesars Arena. Because it's hard for me to sit there and be like, you guys just left the Joe Lewis. You didn't pay all your goddamn bills. You just moved. Yeah. You opened this shit downtown. And downtown Detroit is so fucking cool. It's fun. I, I'm not going to pretend like I don't go to Comerica and I haven't been to, to mm-hmm. Ford Fieldhouse and, and, and benefited and had a good time. But also I look around and I go, damn, there's a lot of displaced people and no one gives a shit. Because it, to them, they go, well, they didn't do anything with this space. Well, they didn't do anything because they got fucked by predatory loans. Yeah, because yeah. they were set up to fail. Yeah, it's kind of hard to, like, you know, get on your feet when you're being fucked down to your knees. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Anyways, weird side tangent. But, yeah, when that in that journey is so, it's so important. And more and more, there are people who are going through college and they're learning this lesson. You know, they're, they're leaving with degrees that they don't, they don't get to use because they don't know how to access it, you know? Mm-hmm. I think it's so fucking awesome that you're able to set this up. You know, you're able to use that degree to your benefit. I, I, I think one of my, you remember the Mumblecore like directors and stuff? Like, uh, was it Joe Swanberg and mm. the Duplass brothers? Uh, I think like Lena Dunham kind of falls into them. Oh, okay. But they're all, uh, Kent Osborne, who worked as a storyboard artist on Adventure Time, he's in that group too. Greta oh, Gerwig. Okay. okay. Uh, Tiny Furniture, uh, Nights and Weekends, those are all those kind of movies. All of those guys, like like people who are script writers and they're they're damn good writers, filmers, focusing on video, they created their own like format of videos and they use things like Vimeo and shit to get it out there. And they built careers from it. The Duplass brothers fucking made the league. You yeah. know? They've had some damn good shows on HBO. They've built careers, but they built it around a community. And they probably had to go through some fucking shitty ass growing pains. Wouldn't it be great if the lessons that, that they had to learn were able to be imparted and then they were able to be have a network of creatives to help grow people? Yeah. And, and, you know, greed gets in the way and all that shit, but... Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like, like, like master class, right? Like, to some degree, like, having somebody who's really gone through it give you a real rundown on, like, yeah. what you actually are going to need to do to succeed. Yeah, it's like creative networking isn't a bad idea, but it feels kind of gross because some people use it in a gross way. You know? That's where it doubles back to the politician thing of like, you got to have the principles. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? You, you got to have the do. principles. And if you have the principles, then teach people how to play the game. Absolutely. 
That's Abs- a perfect. Absolutely. That's a perfect way to uh, button this all up. Um, yeah. But no, this has been an awesome podcast, Marcus. We'll no, definitely thanks. have you back on uh, next time you launch some big thing. Just let me know. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is this has been awesome. I think people will really enjoy this one. Awesome, man. I mean, hey, thanks for having me. I enjoyed it. Uh, you know, I'm probably gonna you know walk home and, and have my imposter syndrome attack me about what I said. But you know what? <laughs> it's in the universe now. It's, it's in your hands. You it's know? in the universe now. We gotta just share it. And, and I I talk about the importance of this, but it's it's important to put it out there. You know, short of you actually embar- you, you didn't embarrass yourself or anything no. but like short of you actually saying something where i'm like oh i don't want to harm your reputation because i care about you you know <laughs> like i think it's worth putting your ideas out there and if somebody wants to fight your ideas as long as they're acting in good faith and there's a good critique there then there's something to learn from Absolutely. that doesn't mean you change your whole world view but hey i mean you know take it into consideration and then you know move forward and try to grow from it absolutely cool all right awesome peace out everybody <laughs>